Are you wanting to create a Terraform Greg server for you and your friends, but just can't get it up? Well, don't worry, because this video is the Bluetooth for Minecraft servers. All right. Yeah, 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 it is. It is. Don't worry. In this video, we will go over everything, including the obvious step of where to download the server files, changing the config files, of course, and port forwarding. Delightful. All right. But uh, not everything I'm going to go over here is required. But this is a comprehensive guide after all. And if you want to take a look at all my talking points for this video, check the description. They are all down there as well as timestamps. All right, without any further ado, let's get crack lacking. So the first step, of course, is going to be to go to curseforge.com, Terraforma Greg, and download the server file. So where do we find that? Uh, OK, let's go down here. Let's find the latest version. We're going to go ahead and download the 1.20.1 version 0.7.12 file and don't click download here you got to go down to additional files and then find this one down here it's called terraforma greg 1.20 0 0.7.12 server you're going to click that and then download that now the next item we really need to focus on and this is absolutely required is port forwarding if you don't port forward nobody is going to be able to join your server except for yourself because you are on your network but nobody outside of your network is going to be able to join your, your server. So I do have this little website has been around for absolute decades. Well, maybe not decades, but years. Portforward.com. Go ahead and find your router. So let's say I have a Netgear router. I'm going to close that. <laughs> I have a Netgear, Nighthawk, expensive router, expensive router. And it's going to walk you through all of the steps of how to port forward your router. Now, as we know, Minecraft does run on port 25565, and I know this image is blurry. I just pulled it straight from the website, okay? What can I do? Go ahead and set your service name. That's the first one here, just Minecraft. Keep this to TCP UDP. External starting point is going to be 25565. External ending point, 25565. Internal starting point, 25565. Easy, easy, easy. And then internal IP address, you are going to want to set this to your computer's IP address on your local network. So how do you get that? Well, let's go ahead and open our command prompt here. And you're going to type in IP config. All right. And you're going to try to see if you can find some numbers like this. Now, my Internet's a little going to be a vastly different from what yours is like. I don't have a traditional internet connection, but you are going to be looking for a 192.168.1.3 numbers. That is going to be your IP address, and that is going to be exactly what you enter here for your internal IP address. And then you just click apply and save. And there you go. Port forwarded. You're done. Now, of course, you're going to follow the custom instructions for your router. Uh, not everybody has a Netgear Nighthawk. So go in and find your router in this list and it'll tell you exactly how to do it. The next thing we're going to do is navigate to our downloads folder where we downloaded the server pack for Terraforma Greg. Open it up or actually right click and we're going to extract here. Once that's finished extracting, we're going to have two files here. We're going to have the zip that we initially downloaded. We don't need that anymore. We have everything extracted into this folder. You can keep it as is, or you can move this .minecraft out so you can rename .minecraft. It doesn't really matter. But for now, just for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to keep .minecraft as is. Now, you may be looking at the start underscore server dot bat. Don't click it. Don't click it just yet. We're going to configure some items before you even do the initial startup of the server. So the first thing that we are going to do is go back to your web browser, and we're going to go to flags.sh. We're going to create some custom flags, some custom Java flags, just to optimize our performance a little bit more. Now, so if we go into this folder, our Java is Minecraft underscore server dot jar. We want to rename the file name to match that. So it's going to be Minecraft underscore server dot jar. And then we're going to use the Icris flags. They are highly optimized for Minecraft. We're going to keep GUI off. Uh, I just do that because I, I'm able to do everything through the command window instead of the Minecraft server GUI. And I've seen that the server GUI does cause a little bit of performance issues. It may pin your CPU at 100, which we do not want. And then uh, you can turn auto restart on or off. Honestly, I keep it off. It's not that big of a help. Now, when we go over to the memory, 
Terraform Greg, it is recommended to have minimum six gigabytes of RAM. However, I like to run my servers at six at eight gigabytes of RAM, but my computer has 32. So you want to tailor this more to what your computer is able to run. So let's say you're playing Terraform Greg on the same machine that you're hosting the server on. You are going to want eight gigabytes or six gigabytes for your Terraform Greg game client and then six or eight gigabytes for your server. But if your computer only has eight gigabytes of total RAM, you might be running into an issue of running out of RAM. So you want to kind of consider that. And then let's say your computer is only running the server and you only have eight gigabytes of RAM on that computer. You do not want to set this to eight gigabytes. You want to set it to something more like six because you want that two gigabytes of overhead for the operating system. So the two rules of thumb are make sure you have enough available RAM for your operating system. And the second rule is to make sure you have enough RAM dedicated to the server that it won't run out of memory. Now I am running on Windows, so I'm going to click the Windows thing here. I'm going to go ahead and copy this code and we're going to go back here to our server files. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a new text file. So new text document. And I'm going to call this server start dot bat. You want to make sure it's not the same name as the other one, as the pre existing one, but this is the one that we are actually going to be using to start our server. Go ahead and click yes. So now we have server start dot bat. And if you can't see the file extensions here, you want to go to view, show file name extensions. Make sure that's clicked or checked. All right, we'll go and open, not double click, but we're going to right click this item, go to edit and notepad and paste in what we got from flags.sh. And then at the end, I do like to add this pause command so we can save that and close it. Now that we've created that start server or the server start dot bat, I know it's looking real appetizing right now to double click it and run the server but we're going to go and do some more configuration. So go ahead and open up the server dot properties. I have VS code, so I'm going to open it up in that and we're going to configure some items in here. So it's going to be the main things that we want to look at are difficulty. And then the next item that you would probably want to be looking at is line 18. So what is the default game mode? So if somebody were to join your server, what game mode do they join in? You can set it to survival, creative, spectator, I think that I think that's it. I think that's it. <laughs> Survival, spectator or creative mode. And then the next one is going to be your level name. So level name refers to uh, we don't have it created yet, but it refers to your world file. So by default, it's going to be creating a world called world. And if that file is already in your server folder, it's going to access that. But if you have a Let's say you want to create a new world, but you don't want to lose your old world. Uh, you could just set it to world one or world two, and it'll create a new world file. Once it creates that new world file in the future, it will use that new world file as long as this one is set to the world name. And then right below it, we have level seed. So if you have a funky seed that you like to use, you can pop that in there and it will generate the world with that seed. It's just, you know, self-explanatory, right? The next item that we're going to want to look at is the online mode right here line 34 by default in the server properties of this terraform greg pack it is set to false but that causes some issues the first issue is that it's not going to be communicating with the minecraft servers so anybody that joins your game is not going to have their skin it's just just going to be the default steve or the default alex skin the other issue that you're going to have there is if a hacker is able to access the server, they can join with any username they want to. And you know, in the front, that doesn't seem like too big of an issue, but that means that they can impersonate other players on your server. Ah, yeah, there's the issue. So go ahead and set that to true. However, if online mode is set to false, the one benefits of that is that for players that do sail the seven seas, they will be able to join the server. So if you have that kind of situation, of course, do what you need to do. The next item we're going to look at is number 38. So PVP, I always set this to false, you know, whatever your play style is like. And then if we go a little bit further down, we have the simulation distance. This is the distance from each player that chunks will tick 
For example, any farms that are up to eight chunks away from the player, they will continue to work. Or any monsters that are eight chunks away from the player, they will continue to move. Or any mobs. So you can change that. Of course, setting it to a lower number is going to increase performance. Setting it to a higher number is going to need a little bit more of a performance overhead. Going a little bit further down, we have the spawn protection at line 54. Personally, I set this to zero and then I use the in-game chunk claiming for any public servers. But if I'm just playing with friends, you don't need spawn protection. And then a little bit further down, we do have the server view distance. So this is going to be a server locked render distance. So no matter what you set your render distance to in your clients, in your game, it's always going to be maximum this number. Of course, higher numbers are going to require some more performance overhead on the server machines side. Lower numbers are going to save some performance. I like to set it to 12. You can also set it to 16. If you're really ballsy, you can set it to 32. So now that we have the server.properties file set how we like it, let's go ahead and start the server so you're going to find that server start.bat that you just created with the custom flags and double click it and then you should have this command window pop up what it's going to do at the beginning is just load all of the forge files it's going to create a couple extra files in this dot minecraft folder and then after that it's going to create a new world so we'll go ahead and let it do its thing and i'll come back to you All right, well, we know that it works because the word vomit has stopped and we see this one. We have cube.js server, server resource reload complete, and we have a lag message. That's normal. <laughs> so right after you start the server, then for initially, it is going to be a couple ticks behind. Now, you don't want to hop on and start playing on it yet. We're going to go through some other configuration files to knock in exactly what your play style want, needs to be. So to stop the server, we're not going to push the big red X in the upper right. So we're going to go ahead and type in stop. And it'll stop the server safely. That's what you want to do every single time. Now let's say you ran into an issue and the server failed to start up for the first time. Well, what you can do then is you can go into your .minecraft folder here, go to logs, and check out your latest dot log. Right here at the beginning, it's going to say what the environment is like. So we're running uh, Minecraft Forge version 47.26 on Minecraft version 120.1. And then right after that, it's going to say what your Java version is. So I know I installed Temurin, but it's still running on that Java version 21 that I already had installed. So that could that could be an issue that leads into further problems down the line. But if that is not your issue and you're running into other things, if you go down, you'll see an entire block of error messages. Now, this isn't a good example because this one successfully started up for the first time. But if you run into any issues, you can always read through it and find what the culprit is. Now, after that initial startup of the server, you're going to notice that we have a whole lot more files here. One of the new ones is going to be world. That is your world save. That is your server's world. We're not doing anything with it right now, but we are going to go ahead and look into the configs at the moment. So if you go in and sort by name, one item that I do really want to start highlighting for you is going to be the TFC common.toml. We'll go ahead and open that one up. And I do want to highlight this item right here. Calendar line 12 default month length. So by default, each month in Terraforma Craft or Terraforma Greg is eight days. Now, if you want to set that to a higher number, such as 12, 30, 128, oh, that's a six, <laughs> 128, you can, but that's only going to apply for new worlds. If you're in an existing world and you change this default month length, you're going to have to go in game and use a slash time command. What that command is going to look like, it's going to be slash time set month length and then days. And I'll show you right here on screen. Now, the next config file that I want to bring to your attention is going to be TFC desire paths slash common dot toml. Basically, what TFC desire paths does is that as you're walking around or you're you're moving around in the world or an animal is moving around the world, it will turn grass blocks into dirt blocks and uproots grass as well as stones. Now, this seems like a great thing. However, it can cause really bad lag issues. So I always set this one 
over here, destroy vegetation, line 13. I always set this one to false. Now we'll go in and save that one, and it's applied. Easy as that. Now the next config file that I really want to highlight for y'all, if we go back out to our .minecraft folder, and then go into our world folder here, down to server config, and look for server, tfc slash server dot toml. Go ahead and open that one up. And we're going to have a huge configuration file here. It is absolutely massive, but I want to highlight line 659. If we can scroll down all the way, 659 under mechanics collapses. So, uh, it's Terraforma Greg, Terraforma Craft, they have block gravity. If you want to turn that off completely, this is where you're going to do that. And then the next item I want to highlight for y'all is going to be line 739. Let's see, I scrolled a little bit too far. 739. This is going to be your food decay multiplier. Now, uh, despite what, what the comments say here, if you set this to zero, and I've tried this and I ran into this issue before, if you set this to zero, you may think that you're disabling food decay. However, it does make all of your food immediately rotten. Now, nobody wants that. So what instead you can do if you want a super long decay timer, you can set this to 0 0.0000000000001. As long as it's the small, small number and not zero, then it should work. But if you desire to play in absolute hardcore, for some reason, you can set it to 1000. This way, food will decay in minutes instead of months. <laughs> so now that we have all of that set up, port forwarding, configurations, the initial startup, we can finally start to test our server. So let's go ahead and open up the server start.bat. You're going to see in this window that the server is going to start, you know, start starting up. And once it's started up, we can go into our Terraformagrag game client and try joining it. All right, so here we are. It says dedicated server took 23 seconds to load. That's pretty quick, actually. <laughs> wow, I'm impressed. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up my Terraformagrag client. And I can see here that my LAN world, which is the server I just booted up, is available to join. But if we want to do some more testing, you can also do localhost if the LAN world doesn't show up. Now, localhost is only going to work if you are hosting the server on the same machine that your game is running on. If you're not, then you will have to put in your computer's IP address. So that can be the local IP address that you just found in the command window, or it can be your public IP address. But we just port forwarded. So let's go in and try that one. Now, how do you find your public IP address? Well, you're going to go to this handy dandy little, little website. It's called whatismyipaddress.com. And it's going to tell you right here, this is your public IP address. So this is the number that you would give to your friends or you would put into your own Minecraft client to test out your port forwarding. So we'll go in and do that here. It's not going to work for me just because of how my internet is set up, but if you set everything up correctly and everything is working as it should, then that should work for you. Now that's going to be it. The final step is just have fun. Go ahead and share that public IP address with all your friends and they should be able to hop on your server. If they can't, let me know in the comments. People down there should be able to help you out. But as long as you followed all of these steps correctly and they work as expected, <laughs> then you shouldn't have any issues. Who's this guy? Beat him up, beat him up, beat him up. All right, well, I hope this tutorial was helpful. I hope y'all have a great day. Cheers. Take care of yourselves. Have fun.